Hello, welcome people. In this video, let us look at hepatitis virus. Now, these are virus that cause hepatitis. What is hepatitis? Hepatitis is the inflammation of the liver. Okay, so liver, anything hepatic means liver, right? So hepatitis, itis, itis means inflammation. So hepatitis, so the inflammation of the liver. Uh, and here we are discussing the virus that primarily their job is to cause hepatitis. Okay, so we are going to discuss some of these virus. So what is hepatitis? It is inflammation of liver. This can be due to alcohol because of so many viruses or even drugs um, that is medicines etc. Now here we there are a lot of virus which can create hepatitis okay like uh, hepatitis virus itself, cytomegalovirus, yellow fever virus, Epstein-Barr virus, herpes simplex virus, rubella virus, enterovirus etc. Here, our focus is only on these hepatitis virus, whose primary job is just to make inflammation of the liver. Now, here, hepatitis virus, actually, they are not from the same family or genus, etc. They have just been grouped together under this group, though they are from different families, that you should understand. Actually, there are a lot of hepatitis virus, like A, B, C, D, E and G. Here, we will be looking only at A, B, C, D, E, okay? Let's move on. So what happens if there is hepatitis? Basically, the clinical symptoms can be nausea, vomiting, jaundice. That is the increase in the bilirubin level. Okay. Now, when the bilirubin level exceeds uh, 2 milligram per deciliter, that is the serum. Okay. So, here you can note that it is serum bilirubin. <clears throat> the serum bilirubin levels are greater than 2 milligram per deciliter deciliter. That time it is called as jaundice. Okay. So this person will have ictris that is the yellowish sclera and then urine will be dark uh, yellow. Right. So all this is uh, these are the characteristics of jaundice that is hyperbilirubinemia. Okay. All this happens in hepatitis. Now this is hepatitis B virus structure. B is very important for exam. We have to go detail into B. However, at this point, our focus is only on learning the differences between A, B, C, D, E. So, are you ready uh, to look at the differences between A, B, C, D, E, hepatitis virus? Excellent. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Let's get started. So, basically, hepatitis A is called as HAV, hepatitis A virus, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, hepatitis D virus and hepatitis E virus. Note that B, C, D are having certain uh, things very similar and A and E will have certain things similar. Is this much clear? Very good. Now what this uh, A is, it's also called, they're saying common name is infectious hepatitis. Okay. And uh, B is causing serum hepatitis. This is the common name they are saying. This much you remember. Now remember that the family of each of this is different, right? But they are grouped together because of their characteristics of hepatitis. This B virus, hepatitis B virus is DNA virus. It is the only one here you can see which has DNA. All others have RNA. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the B, C and D, they are spherical. You already saw B, right? The diagram in that you saw the spherical. Correct? No. You saw the spherical. So, B, C, D are spherical. A and E have some icosahedral symmetry. Envelope. B, C, D have envelope. Okay. Now, uh, just one more point here. D, D is there, right? D is actually defective virus. For its replication, it needs hepatitis B. For if for replication of D, B it needs. So, if you vaccinate the person against B, he can be protected against D also. Now, going here to the genome. All of them are single-stranded RNA. However, hepatitis B virus is partially double stranded okay circular partially double stranded partially circular double stranded dna so just pay attention to that then moving on to the other differences b c d are acid sensitive right so acid can destroy these virus b c d okay now coming to root of transmission b c d hepatitis b is also called as serum hepatitis right so you know it is blood something to do with blood so it can have sexual transmission vertical transmission that is from parent to child 
parenteral root transmission can be there then uh, uh, other contact with blood can also bring b c d infections okay coming to a and e both are feco oral a actually they are saying rarely it can be sexual also but mainly remember feco oral route for a and e then what is the next point here fulminant disease see fulminant disease is frequent in d in others it is rare it is there okay even in hepatitis b fulminant disease everything is there it's rare but okay what is fulminant disease basically the liver begins to fail very quickly that is fulminant disease okay then next let's move on carrier so b c d they uh, they have a carrier stage okay chronicity b c d there is chronic disease however you should note that a and e they are only acute they will acute they'll resolve themselves there is no chronic phase in a and e that's a good thing right so we are done with the uh, differences now we have one more table of differences okay we are moving to the next difference uh, next set of differences here okay oncogenic b c d happily cause oncogenesis so they cause neoplasms like hep uh, hepatocellular carcinoma etc they have written here see hepatocellular carcinoma they will cause so they all are oncogenic then prevalence prevalence of uh, a and b are more right you must have heard that's why hepatitis a and b are more especially a will be in food kind of contamination in people who are living in hostels etc there will be lot of contamination with hepatitis a okay so the prevalence of a and b are high what are the associated other features associated other features will be like let us look at this hepatocellular carcinoma cirrhosis of the liver autoimmune disease like uh, agn arthritis pan what is pan polyarteritis nodosa rt and agn is uh, autoimmune glomerular nephritis so basically everything is autoimmune okay so let's move on so fulminant hepatitis they have written here for d you know that frequently it will cause fulminant hepatitis then moving on so prognosis uh, prognosis of a is excellent right only acute condition it will never become chronic b is worse with age the prognosis of b is worse with age it will um, the prognosis you cannot cure it very easily with age profile axis um, for a there is a vaccine and post exposure prophylaxis is also available immunoglobulins for see hiv immunoglobulins so basically let's say a person is staying in a hostel and eating this kind of food which may they may be susceptible to hiv a they can take a vaccine if they are post exposure uh, uh, then they can also take a prophylaxis just before they get the disease they can take this immunoglobulins coming to hepatitis b which all health workers are given even i have taken so this is hepatitis b vaccination It's a, um, there are a lot of vaccines. This is hepatitis B immunoglobulin, is it? H B I G. Yes, this will be a passive immunization. Recombinant vaccines are also available. Okay. Now therapy. What are what are the if a person gets this infection, then how will you treat? So for A and E, none because they don't cause any chronicity. They are only acute and self-limiting. Now coming to these, these are also self-limiting. Most viral diseases are actually self-limiting. But if you want to give therapy, you have the pegylated interferon lamivudine okay interferon pegylated interferon so this covers the differences between hepatitis a b c d e okay just take a recap and then we meet in the next video where we are discussing the details of hepatitis b okay <clears throat> okay so recap now uh, are you fine with the recap okay let's get started hepatitis virus so virus that causes inflammation of the liver so these viruses are many but we are focusing on hepatitis a b c d e in this video so once there is hepatitis infection there can be ictris there can be uh, uh, jaundice right there is uh, increased in serum bilirubin level nausea vomiting will accompany urine will be dark yellow hepatitis b virus this is how it looks spherical now looking at the differences between a b c d e b c d always have some common features 
A and E have some common features. A is common name infectious hepatitis. A is actually uh, from the picoRNA uh, family. It has icosahedral symmetry. It has uh, RNA. RNA is the genetic material. It is uh, sensitive. It is acid stable. Okay, it is acid stable. Yes, it is acid stable. It is transmitted via fecal oral route. Rarely it can be sexual blood products etc. Fulminant disease is rare. Carrier state does not exist. Chronicity, no, it is causing only acute infection. It is not oncogenic. Prevalence is high, especially among hostile people, etc. Then uh, there can be a secondary attack. Prognosis is excellent for hepatitis A. That's why there is no chronic, only acute will be there. Then prophylaxis, there is vaccine available. And also remember there is post-exposure prophylaxis, uh, that is immunoglobulins are also available. No specific therapy recommended here. So that was about hepatitis A. Time to look at hepatitis B guys. Hepatitis B, go back. Okay, so it's the common name is serum hepatitis. It is a DNA virus and it is a spherical. This genus thing will remove guys. So, okay. Uh, it is a spherical virus. It has envelope. It is partially double stranded DNA. They are saying it is circular also at times. Uh, acid sensitive, it is acid sensitive, it is going to be spread via blood, uh, sexual contact, vertical transmission that is from parent to child. Fulminant disease is rare, there is carrier state in hepatitis B, chronicity also is there. Then, it is oncogenic, it causes hepatocellular carcinoma, the prevalence also is high. It causes autoimmune disorders like autoimmune glomerular nephritis, arthritis, uh, pan, that is poly polyarteritis nodosa. The prognosis is worse with age. The prophylaxis available are the immunoglobulins and recombinant vaccine, which I have taken. Recombinant vaccine I have taken. <clears throat> I have taken three doses of this. Therapy, pegylated interferon and lamivudine. Okay, so we are done with hepatitis. B now. Let's move on to hepatitis C. Hepatitis C. Hepatitis C very similar to hepatitis B. Okay. It has RNA but it is also acid sensitive. It is also transmitted via blood sexual vertical transmission and then uh, what else is unique we will see. Everything is similar, hepatitis C. Now let us move on to hepatitis D. Hepatitis D now. D is defective virus, it's, it's delta agent it is called. It needs hepatitis B for its replication. Uh, then it is also spherical. It is acid sensitive, transmitted via blood sexual vertical. Here, what you have to remember, the only thing different here is the fulminant disease is very frequent in uh, hepatitis D. Have everything same as B and C otherwise. Treatment here is interferon, okay. Moving on to the last one, hepatitis E. <coughs> this is actually transmitted in uh, fecal oral route, right? So, remember... It is transmitted fecal oral route. Everything is similar to hepatitis A virus. Secondary attack can be there. Therapy none because only acute will be there and this chronic won't be there. So that covers all the five virus we wanted to cover now. Next video <clears throat> we'll get started with uh, hepatitis B details. Okay. So come back. Uh, let us look at hepatitis B in the next video. Okay, say bye. Bye-bye.